Okay, so back in January, I posted a video of when I had uh, just finished up the shop, gotten all the machines into the shop. Uh, since then, I haven't really posted anything, and I just wanted to give you an update here. Uh, I've been working on several uh, shop projects and then also one product and production job um, uh, that it's, that's been taking up my time. And I haven't really done anything very exciting that you'd, that uh, you'd want to see as a, uh, as a project. But now I have a little time on my hands and I'm uh, going to uh, go ahead and post a project. Now here, this is a uh, bandsaw box. This is a prototype of one that I'm going to build in a build video here. Uh, it comes out of this this book, uh, Sculpted Bandsaw Box, is by Lois Keener Ventura. Uh, this is really a neat book, has a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, very neato uh, designs in it. And this, is, uh, this box, it's all uh, cut out of uh, one, one uh, chunk of wood. Uh, this, since this is a prototype, I just used, uh, glued together some 2 by 6s and that's what, that's what I used. Uh, and I'm going to spend, spend a little time and uh, show you how I made this thing. Mostly entertaining, but a little informative as well. Hope you enjoy. So this is the block I'm going to be using for the bandsaw box. It's a piece about six and a half by 10 inches. It's a maple. It's glued up into about uh, four and a half inches thick, three pieces. And um, it's just been sitting around my shop for a long time. Uh, now I have an opportunity to use it. Let's make a bandsaw box. Okay, so normally to make a bandsaw box, the first thing you would do is cut out the contour of the box. But I'm going to break with convention here. Uh, this is quite a bit of maple for this to be sawing through, and I don't want. I want to have a flat bottom on this as I uh, as I cut off the back of the box. So it'll still be a rectangle as I'm cutting it out, and then I'll uh, I'll cut the back to shape a little bit later. If you're not familiar with the process of making a bandsaw box, this will uh, this will all become a more clear a little bit later. Okay, so now that the uh, back has been cut off of the blank, I can go to the step of cutting out the shape of the box itself and releasing the drawers. What I'll do is I'll turn the blank on its back like this, and now I can follow these lines. Okay, so now I'm going to show the process of cutting out one drawer here. This is kind of a lengthy process, so I'm going to take this time to ask you for your feedback. feedback. Um, in the uh, intro, I asked, uh, or I mentioned that I had been building some pro shop projects, and that, that probably isn't something that you uh, wanted to see, but uh, it occurs to me that maybe it is uh, something you want to see. If so, let me know. Also, um, just let me know what other types of projects you'd like to see, you know, whether it's, you know, maybe lawn furniture or uh, furniture for the house, other uh, 
knick-knack type of uh, projects like this, kitchen gadgets and that kind of thing. Just uh, whatever ideas you uh, have that you'd like to see, let me know. Um, let me know whether you'd like to see more uh, informative or more entertaining, although I am uh, shooting for a mixture of the two. I don't want it to be um, be just entertaining or uh, just a woodworking classroom. I just kind of like to be like it to be a mixture of the two. And uh, just any other ideas that you would like to uh, like to see for the uh, for the channel, just let me know. Thank you. Now I've finished the uh, first cut of this drawer and in order to back out that blade without pulling it off the wheel I s insert a wedge into the end of the cut and I'm able to remove the, uh, the blade from the blank. At this point the next cut is supposed to start at a perpendicular angle to the first cut. So what I'm doing here is just removing a whole bunch of tiny little slivers so that I can turn the blank sideways and start the next cut. So now all those slivers are cut out and I'm able to get the blank turned sideways with the blade inside that notch and now I have room to get get in there and start making that uh, that final cut of this drawer. It'll go all the way around the back to the uh, to the uh, same point where the first cut ended and that'll release the first drawer. And I am taking this painfully slowly. I think it's better to go ahead and take your time and uh, leave yourself with fair curves than to leave yourself with a whole bunch of sanding to do later on. Just trying to stay as close to those lines as I possibly can. And that is how the drawers get released. Here I'm marking a half an inch on the front of the drawer and a quarter inch on the back of the drawer. I'll cut those off and that'll allow me to hollow out the body of the drawer. Now with the front and the back taken off of the drawer, I can go ahead and mark these lines, these dotted lines you see on this template, and that will, that will hollow out the, uh, the drawer. So, and one of the things I learned from the prototype was that it's very difficult to get in here and sand in this tight corner. So I'm gonna leave these, these corners on this piece uh, quite a bit uh, wider and that'll allow me to get the uh, spindle sander in there and uh, I'll be able to sand it a lot more nicely. Okay, so that is the drawers cut out. What I did is I took a half of an inch off of the front a quarter of an inch off the back and then hollowed out the uh, rest of the drawer. And here's how the concept of the bandsaw box works. I'll glue the front back onto this, I'll glue the back back on, and the whole kit and caboodle will slide in back into the box like so. That's how the bandsaw box works. And then finally, 
There's the back. I'll glue it back on the back. And there's the whole idea of how the uh, bandsaw, bandsaw box works. All right, so now, okay, so the next step is sanding, and there's gonna be a lot of sanding. I'll start out here at the spindle sander, and the first thing I'm gonna do is sand out the insides of the drawers and just make those as smooth as possible. Uh, once, once that's... Okay, so there's everything all glued up. That's the box right there. Lots and lots of clamps on it, and then the three drawers all lined up in a row, and plenty of clamping power there as well. We'll see you tomorrow. So the drawers and the box are out of the clamps now. I'm going to give it a wipe down with mineral spirits to remove the template, and then we'll continue sanding. So the next sander I'm going to use is this combination sander, and it has uh, three stations to it. Over here is a 12-inch disc sander. I won't be using that. I will be using this. This is a 6-inch uh, by 48-inch belt sander. It uh, gives you a flat platen here for uh, sanding flat faces. And then also you can take the top off of here, and you have this 4-inch drum on the top for, for sanding con concave curves. All right. And then finally, over here on the, uh, on the left-hand side, this is a pneumatic drum, all right? And it, you can see it's pretty soft, all right? So it's, it's good for uh, sanding, uh, sanding curves and get, putting a soft edge on things, round, rounding things over. All right, so I'll be using these, these two stations and doing uh, sanding almost the entire box using, the, using uh, using this, and then eventually it's on to hand sanding. Okay, so after quite a bit of hand sanding, the box and the drawers are looking pretty good right now. I've sanded it up to 220 grit and it has a nice feel to it. So the next thing is to cut out the uh, drawer pulls in walnut, and I'll show you how that works out. Here I'm simply using a box cutter to cut out the drawer pole templates. So I'm using this Super 77 spray adhesive to adhere the template to the blank. Okay, so I've sawed the template uh, right up close to the line, and now I'll take it over to the uh, strip sander and sand it right up to the line. Okay, so now that the drawer poles are cut out to rough shape, I'll go ahead and use the strip sander to take them right down to the line. Okay, so now I use the spindle sander to send the inside curves down to the line. Okay, so I've masked off the front of the drawers to minimize the uh, squeeze out issues, and now I can go ahead and glue on the uh, drawer pulls. Uh, I'll go ahead and you just use yellow glue for that and uh, use a, uh, an acid brush to apply it. And then you, I'll use the uh, spring clamps.
Okay, so that's the uh, drawers with the poles glued up on them. Uh, tomorrow I'll go ahead and uh, give it a little bit of final sanding, give it a wipe down with mineral spirits, and then finally start getting the finish on it. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, after a lot of hand sanding, the construction of the box is finished and now I'm ready to go ahead and start putting a finish on it. I'll be using a spray lacquer and uh, I'm just using that because I can get quite a few coats on it in a, in a day and I'll be able to make some quick work of finishing this. I'll show you how that works out. And I'll give that a little time to dry. Okay, so I was able to get three coats of lacquer on this box yesterday, both top and bottom. So that's a total of six coats of lacquer. The wood was really thirsty, so it soaked up the lacquer uh, quite a bit and um, didn't really build. But finally on that third coat, the uh, lacquer started building. So it's uh, starting to look pretty good. Now I need to start sanding in it in between all the uh, coats. So I'll do a little bit of light sanding with 400 grit paper. I'm not going to make you watch me uh, do that hand sanding. Um, I'll just bring you back once I have a nice finish built up on it. Okay, so I've finally finished getting the uh, finish on it. It's got uh, five coats of lacquer on the box and on, and on the drawers. Uh, now I'm ready to go ahead and do the final step of the finishing, which is I'm going to rub it down with a little bit of steel wool just to knock off the high sheen, and then I'll give it a, a coat of the uh, Johnson Paste Wax uh, to give it a, a nice feel to it. I'll go ahead and bring you in a little bit. Okay, so there's the finished bandsaw box. I think it came out pretty nicely. The contours look real good. The contrast between the maple and the walnut looks real nice, and the finish is just wonderful. The prototype came out equally as well, I believe. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a like. I look forward to making more videos in the future.